Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. We begin with a story told by a bank employee, the story of an annoying client. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. You want me to check that this is your number? Sure. I'm a bank teller, full-time, Monday through Friday. Background info on tellers, and really all bank employees, is that we get paid fairly well and get great benefits to encourage us not to steal. This is important to note. Now we have a client who we'll call Jay. Jay is a problematic client as they've accused us of stealing from them multiple times. They've even accused us of stealing from them when they were holding the cash they had just withdrawn in their hand. Suffice to say, none of us like Jay, and we would take extra steps to make sure that Jay's transactions have all been properly documented to the upteenth degree. We have them fill out a withdrawal slip even if they have their card, we write their name on our cash counter tickets whenever we run their transaction, and we staple the white copy of the ticket to the withdrawal slips. Now as said, Jay has been accusing all of us of stealing from them. Despite them regularly having their debit card lost and or stolen from them around town, they've even accused our branch manager of stealing from them. Our branch manager only touches cash when closing or opening an account, otherwise they stay in their office and make calls. And they also have none of the systems in their office that would make stealing possible. Not that they would, because once again, the pay is good. So, we're having a slow morning, so there's time to answer phones. Even with lobbies closed and being drive through only, we get slammed regularly when we don't have time to answer. I pick up when it rings, and it's none other than Jay. What follows is a paraphrased conversation. Me. Thank you for calling bank name on street name. This is the Hello One. How can I help you today? Caller. Me. Hello? Caller. Me. Hello? Jay. Yeah, it's Jay. Can you hear me now? Me. Oh, hey, Jay. Yeah, I can hear you now. How can I help you? Jay heatedly. I'm missing money from my account. I had over $100 in there on Friday, and now I have less than 50 Me. Oh, no. I'll look into that for you. One sec. Jay, still heated, could you please thank you? Me, brushing off the anger, I understand client frustrations and I'm having a pretty okay day all around. Check their account and they are the only one who's done anything with their account. All right, so I see here where you had those funds on Friday, then you made a withdrawal. Jay, yeah, yeah, that was the last withdrawal I made. Me, uh, no, you made a withdrawal Monday and yesterday as well. Jay ignoring me, I've told you all a hundred times I don't want anything coming out of that account. I have my card shipped to you because they get stolen all the time. I don't want anything coming out of that account that I'm not authorizing. Me. And you authorize these two withdrawals. I have your slip. Jay. I need that money to live off of. Nothing else. I don't buy anything else. I use that money to live. I told branch manager to take $300 from my check each month and put it into savings, and I don't see that. Me. As they're ranting checking their accounts, and seeing that they have no savings account. My teller coordinator slips me a piece of paper. If Jay thinks they're being stolen from, get them over to fraud. Me, after Jay takes a break and they're ranting, Jay, do you think you're being stolen from? Jay, of course I am. I'm losing money. I'm trying to keep my account stable, and it keeps going up and down. Me, well, do you want me to get you over to fraud? Jay, what you can do, do you even know how to add and subtract? Me, taking a deep breath, yes I do, and all your transactions add up to what you had on Friday and what you have now. Well, what you can do is transfer me to the branch manager. Are they available? Me, not missing a beat, knowing they are. No, Jay, they're with a client right now. Well, have them call me back. My number is, you have my number in your computer. Me, sad for my manager, goes to check the number. Is it phone number? Let me check. I don't know. I don't call myself. Can you call me, see if that's the number, see if my phone's working? Me, smiling. I can do that for you. I'll have to hang up first, though. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Me, hangs up. Now, our systems are usually up to date because we do service a number of older clients who don't really move at all, but there's times where the account is so old and they haven't checked with a banker in a while that the information is wrong. Jay also left no callback number in case this was wrong. 
So I called, and it rings, and rings, and rings. Robo voice. The number you were trying to reach is no longer in service. Me, smiling as I hang the phone up. Guess that wasn't the right number. Oops. I hope it was your day off when he called back. He's going to return with the power of an imploding star. And our second story. You need to check all of our food. Fine. So this happened like seven or eight years ago when I was jobbing at a driving service while I was a student. The driving service was one for people with disabilities that couldn't drive or walk on their own. Our main office was in the building of a housing slash working facility for disabled people. The two companies, our driver service and the housing facility, were loosely connected as they were both financed by the same organization. However, management wisely were clearly separated. We were about 15 drivers at this location, and we shared our lunch slash social room with about 10 caretakers. Since our schedules were horribly organized, the drivers often had idle time, so the social room was where everybody hung around waiting to work. One day, my boss, call him Tom, brought cake to work because he turned 60. The cake was enormous, like a wedding cake could hide behind it twice. I can only imagine how expensive it must have been. At nine, every driver had eaten some pieces, and there was still like 80% of it left, so Tom told the caretakers they should feel free to take some. Then Karen happened. She was something like the security inspector of the facility. She had authority over the caretakers, but no dealings with the driving service. Her job was to watch for potential hazards, organize the caretaker's schedule, and generally have an eye on everything happening. When she heard there was cake, she was furious. She and Tom couldn't stand each other, so she was always trying to ruin his day. In this particular instance, she claimed the cake was a health hazard as it contained cream and she could not verify whether the cooling chain was never broken during transport, so she threw it away. All away! Roughly 400 euros worth of food just thrown away. Needless to say, Tom was less than amused. He went extremely mad. He was usually a very calm and gentle man and this was the only time I ever heard him shouting at someone. Still, there was nothing he could do. Karen could basically declare anything a hazard and take action how she saw fit, and her higher up really didn't care. To make matters worse, she doubled down and demanded that every food that was brought into the social room had to be inspected by her first. Obviously, all the drivers were mad at Karen for upsetting Tom and throwing away a perfectly fine cake. So the next day, first thing in the morning, 15 drivers went to her office everyone with his lunch demanding she inspect it. It took her roughly 10 minutes looking at sandwiches and answering questions whether mayonnaise was too hazardous to be brought in. This went on for a whole week. Each day, our questions about hazardous foods becoming more dumb and degenerate. On Friday, it took her more than two hours to inspect our lunch as we would collectively steal her time. Afternoon, she said she got the message and that sandwiches got a general okay and not to bother her with it anymore. Fine. The following week, we went out of our way to eat anything but sandwiches, salads, cake, pretzels, normal lunch stuff. Every day, there was a line in front of her office having their lunch checked, asking stupid questions whether this was or was not too dangerous to enter the social room. Karen was losing her patience, becoming increasingly aggressive towards us, but still refused to apologize to Tom. Then at the end of week two of food checking, Tom brought a bucket for lunch. When he entered Karen's office to have his lunch checked, like he did every day, and opened the lid of his lunch pot, the smell hit everyone in the vicinity like a brick to the face. Apparently, he'd made some unholy mix of garlic, cream, pickles, and herring, which he called fish soup. It looked like what happens if you leave something dead in the sun too long, all brownish and sluggy with some green specks in it, and it reeked twice as bad as it looked. Karen looked as if she would puke any moment, commanding him to remove this monstrosity from her office. Tom asked if she didn't want to check it, since he could imagine the cooling chain could have been broken during transport or sometime in the last two weeks. The lot of us drivers laughed so hard, I swear some nearly choked from laughter. This was roughly the time Karen had to admit defeat. Food checking stopped immediately, and the following week, Tom brought another cake. Bringing the second cake was icing on this story. And our last story. If you mess with my mom, she will get you fired. So a bit of a backstory. My dad cheated on my mom a while ago, 
For some reason, this tart got a hold of my mom's number and would send her hurtful, vile text messages saying crap like, Dad's name loves me now, not you. Get over yourself, and crap like that. My mom rose above that, though, and ignored it the best she could. But one day, Tart came to the house. God knows how she got the address, but one day, Mom heard a knock at the door, and there she was. She did not like that. Apparently, Tart came to the house just to talk, which was bullcrap. She obviously went there to intimidate my mom, and she was having none of it. She was pointing her finger in my mom's face and saying crap like, Stay away from Dad's name. My mom started yelling at this tart to get the F off of her property before she called the police. This attracted the attention of our neighbors, who all knew about the situation, who proceeded to scare her off. Mom said she wanted to deck the tart then and there, but knew she couldn't be on the wrong side of the law, and aggravated assault is still assault, so she had to be sneaky. She looked up this tart, her name, where she lived, where she worked. Turns out she worked in a high-end care home. Now, you have to be of completely sound mind to work in an expensive care home, and showing up at someone's house doesn't exactly mean you're of sound mind, does it? So my mom called the care home, explained the situation, and said they would sort it out. They gave Tart an ultimatum, either accept a resignation or we sack you. She accepted her resignation. Mom got a call from Tart saying that she couldn't get a mortgage and couldn't afford to live now, which was bullcrap considering she was divorced three times before and still had child support and was also living with my dad who worked full time. Either way, my dad eventually left her in the dust and mom didn't take him back. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.